Hi, I'm Hal Blood, and uh, pine owner of Big Woods Bucks, and I want to. I'm going to put together a this map and compass course for everybody because hunting in the big woods, it's critical to know maps and compasses. And I know nowadays everybody's got a GPS and they got a phone with an app on it, but it's all electronic equipment and it can fail. So if you're going to hunt in the big woods or or even go hike or whatever you're going to do, map and compass is really important and it's it's almost kind of be like a you know a lost skill or a dying art I guess you'd call it but I grew up when there was none of the stuff we grew up we all had to use map and compass and right from the time we was boy scouts or the military and everything we didn't have electronics and there really is no substitute <clears throat> for the skill of using a map and compass and what I found over the years is I, I've been I've been hunting in the big woods for 40, 40 years and, or more, and I've been guiding for over 30 years. And um, most people don't, they might know how to use a compass as far as, you know, the, the red arrow points north and north, south, east, west, but most people don't know much more beyond that. I've been teaching a guide school for, oh, I taught guide school for at least 20 years maybe more, and uh, taught a lot of people map and compass over the years. And I teach it different. I'm going to teach you map and compass in an easy, practical way because it can get confusing for people if you, if you just went and bought a compass and you read the, you read the uh, instructions in it. And, and it can be confusing. And you can go, you know, look it up anywhere and find ways. But most everybody is going to teach uh, map and compass by orientating a map and figuring out your declination and then getting to your point wherever you want to go. Um, and it works, but it's not practical in the woods. It's practical here on a desk where you've got, you know, uh, you know, a flat surface, you know, if you're in an area where there's no metal involved, if you were in a building and, and you had a compass and you can move the compass around on a table that's got metal in it and that needle is going to turn. Same way if you're outside and you want to figure out something, place to go, look at your maps. You can't have it near your vehicle. You can't put it on the tailgate of your truck, the hood of your truck. It's all metal. It's not going to be accurate. So I'm going to teach you a simple way to find your direction, simple and accurate. And uh, the main warden service has been using this this method for as long as I can remember. It's the method they use for search and rescue, and that way they can start at their truck, you know, or you know, find their points on their map and just put in their declination and go. So <clears throat> I've got a study guide here that I've always taught with, and. Uh, who we'll kind of follow along with this because the first the first step in the course is going to be compass so we're going to go through how to use your compass different kinds of compasses and uh, then how to use the map with the compass and then part two will be maps and then putting the map the compass and the map together in navigation So there's, there's various kinds of compasses. A lot of hunters always use this type of compass. It's a ball compass. And all this is is really a directional compass because if you pin that on you, it's going to tell you where north is. So when you, the ball always points, the arrow is pointing towards north. So as you turn, it's just telling you what direction you're heading. It's fine, but it's not accurate to put with a map. You can't use it. I have a couple of these other types. I call these my directional compasses and I carry that in my pocket. It does have the degrees on it, but it doesn't have a bezel that you can turn and use with a map. I like it because it's got round edges. Both of these types are basically the same. 
they've got a round round edges they're nice in your pocket they're slim and you just hold them up and you can reference your degrees and kind of generally go accurate enough probably to get you out of the woods but it's not going to get you to a specific point this is another type here it's actually made as a pin on you don't see these very much anymore uh, you can pin that one on and use it that way but it's always going to catch in the brush or you can just fold it up and use it like this and it can be another directional compass this one does have a movable bezel and you can use this one with a map but I always carry one of these I carry this in my uh, in my, my my little pack my belt pack because this is the compass that's easiest to use with a map because it's got a clear base you can see everything through the base of the compass so when you put it on the map you're looking you can look through it line everything up so this is the compass we're going to use on the map this here I always carry this in my pocket and this in my pack I have two compasses might lose one might break one whatever so I'll go over the compass we're going to use with the map is really what we're going to be the most interested in in the course so these there's several brands you can find uh, you know they all work perfectly fine they're liquid filled it's usually some kind of a little oil it dampens the needle down because you don't want the needle shaking around in there and stuff if there's nothing in it so they're dampened with that so the parts of the compass would be you've got your parallel edges or your straight edge then the center part is called a bezel and this will have your degrees marked in it zero to 360. 360 and 0 is the same, that's north. And this bezel will move so you can dial in any bearing or azimuth you want in it. It'll also, we're going to be using it. In this method we're going to use the, what I call the protractor method, which is a simple method to uh, find your way around on a map. <clears throat> so you've got a the needle inside, one end's red, one end's white. Some of them have black and red. The one thing I want you to be mindful of is some of the more inexpensive compasses, they'll have five degree increments. In other words, it'll, all the way around it'll be tick marked off in five degrees. It's a cheap compass. Don't use that for navigation. Get one of the better compasses with two degree increments so it'll go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and then there'll be four ticks in between so it's two degrees, two degrees is really accurate so get one that's got two degrees you've got something up here on the top of this it's, a, it's an arrow and that's where you read your bearing it says on this particular compass it says read bearing here so we talk about bearings. A bearing in an azimuth, we, we interchange that term, but just, just so you know, there's two specific types of these compasses. One is an, an actual bearing compass, and that's what surveyors, foresters typically use. And those, those compasses only go to 90 degrees, and they work in four quadrants. So not to confuse you, but so that would take those compasses go 0 to 90 and then they go 90 to 0 so 0 and zero is north and south on a barren compass unless you're a forester or a, or a uh, surveyor don't use that compass make sure you've got one and most of them are you'd have to specifically search out a barren compass they call this an azimuth compass but we still call it a bearing. we're headed on a certain bearing. So, the other thing I want you to remember about it is, is if you remember the points on it, you got there'll be a north, south, east, and west. So north is zero or three sixty, east is ninety, because that's that's one quarter of the three sixty. South is one eighty, west is two seventy, and then you got you can read the rest of it in between. 
Now inside the compass, you'll see there's lines, there's parallel lines to each other. They're like a quarter inch apart. And then there's an arrow in here that's red. And we call that red in the shed is kind of a term we use because when we're magnetically going to navigate, we're going to put our red needle in the red shed and that'll take us where we want to go. So basically, and then you've got your scale. Usually there's a scale on both sides uh, in inches or some of them are in centimeters. And that, that scale is so you can measure on your map the, uh, the scale of the distance from one side to the other. You know, you look at your scale and that's, that's part two anyways, but that's what that's for. That's how you use it to find your distance. Alright, so basically that's the compass we're going to use and again when we go to put it to use with our maps I call it the protractor method because basically we're using this compass we're not going to use the magnetic needle in this compass to find our bearings. We're going to use the compass as a tool, as a protractor. You could use a regular protractor that you'd use in geometry or whatever we're going to use this, very simple. So we'll get into the maps next, and then we'll put two together. Here we go. We're in part two of our Map and Compass series, and part two is about maps. And the maps are really important uh, because they tell you where you are on the earth. Um, nowadays you have all, you've got GPS, you've got satellite imagery, you've got all of this stuff. But the one thing you have to remember is it's electronic equipment and it can fail. Your batteries can go dead, maybe they shut the satellites off, whatever it is. So you really want to have, if you're going to go navigate in the woods, hunting, fishing, whatever you're doing, trekking, you want to have a good understanding of maps and carry the maps with you, especially if you're in unfamiliar territory. Because all the information about that territory is on a map. Lots of information and it's detailed. So the map, maps are a representation of a certain piece of the earth. And that piece of the earth goes in degrees. Degrees, minutes, and seconds. And if you remember it like time, it's easier because one degree has 60 minutes in it. So you take one degree of, of uh, the earth, there's 60 minutes in it, and each minute has 60 seconds in it and they're all a piece of distance. And that distance isn't standard, it depends on which map you're on. All map, map scale is different, just depends on how big the map's printed out. You could print them off on a eight and a half by 11. So you, don't, you can't reference minutes and seconds into any particular distance. It's just a percentage or a part of a degree. Another Another way people do it, especially in your GPS, is they put it in tenths. They have a degree, and then it'll say .0889 or something. That's, that's the, the decimal. If you're going to use the maps, you should use minutes and seconds. And if you're going to use a map and still carry a GPS, set your GPS to minutes and seconds, degrees, minutes, and seconds, because then it corresponds with your map. Okay, so this here is an original topo map from the early 1900s. Back in the 20s, they started the USGS, Geological Survey, mapped out in detail the United States. These maps are in... Uh, this is this map is in 15 minutes, which means this map represents 
15 minutes of distance north-south and 15 minutes of distance east to west. So what does that tell us? 15 minutes is one quarter of a degree, right? We know it's the 60 minutes in the degree, 15 of them is a quarter of that. So because of that, it's not as detailed as some of the newer maps I'll show you. So, so most of the scale on these original maps, if you read down in the scale at the bottom, it's approximately one inch equals a mile. When you get in to the other maps, it's going to change, and that's just the scale on this map. So if you notice another thing about this map, even though it's 15 minutes each way, the map is taller than it is wide. And why is that? Because the earth is taller than it is wide. In other words, it's further around the North Pole to the South Pole than it is around the equator. So that makes it a different size. So it's not a square map. So basically these maps now have become obsolete because even though they look they're really detailed, they got you know your all your water, your streams, your contour lines, the, the at one inch to a mile it's not very detailed. So what they did starting in 1970, they started converting over to a seven and a half minute map. So all your maps made since the original ones, when they started mapping again, are seven and a half minutes, which means from this corner to this corner is seven and a half minutes, and from this corner down to this corner is seven and a half minutes. If you're not sure what it is, you can read right in it. On this corner of the map, it says 70 degrees and 30 minutes. If I come over here, it says 70 degrees, 37 minutes, 30 seconds. So the, the 7, the 37 is 7 and 30 minutes. That's 7 and a half. Okay? Again, 7 and a half each way. So what that tells us is we're going to have to, between these old, old maps, even though this map is bigger, it's more detailed because it takes four of these maps. You'd have to take two maps sideways and two maps up and down to make the same area as the 15 minute. So obviously, if you carried one of these, you probably, unless you started in the corner, you wouldn't walk off the map probably in a day. In these maps you can because the scale on this particular size USGS map it computes out to two about two and five-eighths inches equals a mile. So you can see here it's probably two, five, two, it's probably like four miles across this map. When it would be across this map it's probably 15 miles, so much more accurate. Okay, another thing about the maps, the old maps had what they call, they have grid lines on them. So grid, grid is a type of uh, measurement that the military uses a lot. It's uh, the earth, they set up the earth into grid squares. And some of the maps have it on it, and these first ones don't. So if you look at this map, there's no grid squares on it. So we're going to do away with this map because we're not going to use those for all practical purposes. Whatever we're learning here, you can, you can put it to use on these, just not as detailed. So I got another map. You'll see that's a little different color green. And this map doesn't have the scale. Everything's the same about it, but starting in 1989, they put the grid lines on it. If you look, it's the only difference. There's no grid lines. Now there's grid lines. And what I found is 
every single map doesn't have the grid lines on them. This particular one does. The reason that's going to be important for us, we're not going to use grid for anything, except it's going to help us establish a bearing with a compass because a grid line is about a half a degree different than true north. So if we come down to our legend here on these maps, we have um, there's a legend and it shows you true north, which has the star on it. The next close line by it, it says grid north. And you can see it's fairly parallel, a little bit off. And then over here, we have what they call magnetic north. That's our magnetic influence and how a compass works. In my area, in Maine, it's in Maine, the the uh, magnetic declination actually changes five degrees throughout the state. And this is important because sometimes you might think you're in a certain state and, and the declination is all the same, and it isn't. It's, it's 18 degrees in my area. Southern Maine is less. North of here is a little bit more. It just is what it is. It doesn't matter what it is. We have to take care of it when we put our map and compass together. So don't worry about what it is. But you have to, before you can use your map, your compass with your map, and get a proper bearing or azimuth, we have to know the declination. The edge of the map, the margin, is always true north. So the edge of the map is true north. Um, what we can do on a map like this is we don't have grid lines, so we don't have a, once we get away from the edge, we won't have a reference. So I've gone ahead and drawn a few parallel lines in this map randomly. All I did was take a straight edge and I started with the margin come over, made a line, set over, made a line, set over, made a line. And all that is is to help us uh, establish our bearing using what I call the uh, protractor method, using our compass as a tool. So anyway, that's, that's a little bit about true north, magnetic north. You have a scale at the bottom of every map. It's a distance scale. It's in meters, it's in feet. And that is your measurement. So a map is map can tell you, like, we, like I told you, it's approximately 2 and 5 eighths inches to, to a mile. So if you want to know the distance between two, two uh, features that you're going to go through, whether it's a road or a pond or a stream, whatever you're trying to get to, all you have to do is lay a straight edge on it and either mark a paper and put it by the scale or measure it, physically measure it, and it's in this do the math and find out your distance. So that's another feature of the map, very important. Again, getting back to uh, uh, latitude and longitude. So north-south is a longitudinal line, if you remember it by long, the earth is longer this way, it's self-explanatory, the map is longer, there's longitude and there's latitude, which is east to west, um, they measure distance the opposite way, but the lines run longitude long, latitude east to west. So some of the other things on a map, the symbols, the most important other feature, well there's a couple of things. We've got colors in a map. Basically, you got about four colors. You got blue. Blue is water, whether it's a stream or pond or lake. Blue is water. You'll even see in this map there's some blue, which is it looks like little grass clumps. It's a symbol for uh, like swale grass or a wet area. 
when you see the blue in it, that means it's, there's water in it. Because you might see the grass clumps, which indicate a swamp, but you might see them in the, in the green. So when you see them in the white, um, white is an open area. So here would be bogs, swamps, bogs. Uh, sometimes you see some of it around the ponds where it's more open. You might see uh, white on the top of a mountain where the trees don't grow. We just call that an open area. White is an open area. Blue is water. Green is vegetation. You get into some maps out west where it's more to be more white probably because it hasn't doesn't have trees. Vegetative trees is what the green is. Um, and then you'll have these brown squiggly lines everywhere on a map. That's called a contour line. And what that measures is elevation from sea level. And if you go around closely and look at these lines, on this particular, and that's different on different maps, so you want to check in your scale, and it'll tell you the contour interval. Here in Maine, our contour intervals on these maps, it's always 20 feet. When you get out into steeper country, it might be 100 feet. Flatter country, get down to Florida or something with a lot of Everglades and flat, it might be 5 feet. Doesn't matter what it is, it tells you're in the map. And then here they're always, there's a dark brown line for every four light brown ones. So that's going to measure 100 feet for us. So you can look at a line. The brown lines will be marked with, a, with an elevation. If I go ahead and look at this one, I can, find, I can go around this contour line, and I can find here 1,600. This line is 1,600 feet above sea level, and then above it, you count every one, it's 20 feet more higher for every contour line. So 16, 20, 40, 60, 80. So it's 16, 80, and a little probably above that top. You can go the other way, 1,600, and you can count down to the next brown one. If you don't see a number on it, it'll go down to 1,500. So that's contour. When you see the contour lines really close together, it's telling you you're in steeper terrain. When you see them spread way out, it's flatter terrain. So the map is, before you go into the woods, the map's telling you a lot about it. I mean, you might, some areas where it's not as many trees, you can look off and you can see the ridges and the mountains. Some places you can't. You've got it on your map. You don't need to see it. Other things we have in here, there's, there's township lines, there's county lines. There's roads, uh, different effects. It'll, it'll tell you in the legend if it's a, a drivable road or a, a lot of them have uh, Jeep trails on the old, old roads that are impassable now. So lots of information on a map. Um, these maps come in what they call a quadrangle, and it's listed up in the corner. It'll show you a quadrangle. And the newer ones didn't have it, just had the quadrangle. It's down here too. Tells you the latitude and longitude. But if you come over in these 1989s and above, there's a little kind of a legend thing in here, which is kind of handy. And it's got nine squares, like a tic-tac-toe board. And the middle one is the map you're on. Always. They'll always put that one in the middle. And you read, this one here is Cat Heart Mountain. So if you wanted to get the next map over, this is what makes it easy. If you, if you were going to hunt a fish or your trail went over onto the next map, all you got to do is come down here and look to the next one over, whether it's north, south, east, or west. Read the number, and it tells you which quadrangle you need to buy for that area. And you buy that one, and that one will be in the middle, so on and so forth. It makes it simple to go purchase a map. Um, most of these maps, the USGS, you, you buy them on the USGS.gov website, and 
I think they're seven dollars and something a piece. But like I said, a really wealth of information. <clears throat> and then uh, what we're going to do in part three is we're going to put the map to the the compass to the map so we can navigate any way you want to go in the woods or anything. I'm going to show you the simple way to do it and I think it'll be the easy way for you to learn. <clears throat> okay, so now we know in these 1970-ish maps that the, uh, the North legend is over, over in a picture. You know, you've got true mag grid and magnetic. Now in these later versions, the last versions of the USGS maps from the late 80s, you don't have the legend. You don't, you've, got, you've got true north, which is basically just a line parallel to the edge of the map, and the edge of the map is easier because it's long. But the declination is in here, so you have to read it. You have to read it in this little informational piece, and it'll tell you the, the, the grid declination, and it'll tell you the magnetic declination. That's all you really care about. So you're going to read into it, that it's 18 degrees on this particular map, 18 degrees magnetic declination. It'll say west declination. So west declination, all that means is when you live in the east, we all know there's a, the, the pole, the magnetic pole on the earth is somewhere in central northern Canada. So obviously if we lived in the east coast, the declination is to the west of us, northwest, but basically west. So it'll say west declination. If you lived in California or out west somewhere, your map is going to say east declination, whatever degrees. And it's not a, it's not a simple straight line either because of all the magnetic activity in the earth. If you saw a picture of those lines, they squiggle everywhere. Some of them turn east to west, then north, then east to west. That's why it's important to read it on your map because it isn't. You can't calculate it because it's not a straight line. You have to use that information in your map to use your map and compass and put them together to get where you're going. Okay, now that we, uh, we know about a compass, we know about our maps, now the third part is, is, to, is to put the compass to use with the map so we can navigate. And I'm going to do it, I'm going to give you an example of it first, and, and the difference in this than what you would learn uh, in map and compass Meriden is most people, or most people, most people teach how to orientate your map. We need to orientate the map or we need to adjust for our declination. We talked about that. So the way you would find it in, in most instruction would be to set your declination into your compass. In this case, it would be 18 degrees. And then you lay it on the side of your compass and you rotate your map until you box that red in the shed. So that's fine to do, but in the woods it's very impractical. Like I said again, you know, if you're in the woods trying to do it, like you can't do it around a vehicle, a metal or anything, you, you, if you're trying to hold this map on the leaves in the woods, or maybe there's snow, which is even worse, so your map's gonna get wet. The wind is blowing maybe, and the, the map's wiggling around, you can't be accurate with it because you, you, what you have to do that way is once you get your map orientated, you have to hold that map so it doesn't wiggle at all because if it wiggles a couple of degrees, you're off. You're not going to be where you're going. So it's very difficult to do and very impractical. So this is why I'm going to teach you how to do it this way. It, it's so simple and easy and it's, it's actually more accurate because you just have to do the math. 
And so anyways, um, I'm going to start with that with an example. And, and because the side of the map is true north, when we use the protractor method with our compass, our, our bearing we're going to get is true north, and we just add the declination afterwards. So I've got a little, uh, um, like a little example sheet or a practice sheet I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work with for one time before we actually do it on the map. So on this, on this sheet, there's a, there's a direct north-south line. That's our reference point. And then all it is is it's marked off with a few places to go. We got north, south, east, west. So, so on this example, I'm going to go um, to point A. Okay. So point A is up here. So all I got to do, I'm going to take my compass and I'm going to lay the straight edge of my compass in my direction of travel. So I'm going, we're all starting in the center. The center says zero. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to lay the compass right along that line, the A line. I'm going to hold it down. And what I'm doing is I'm placing the bezel, the clear bezel over my parallel line, my north south line, because that's how we're going to use it as a tool. Okay. And then all I'm going to do is rotate the bezel of the compass until the bezel lines inside the clear bezel line up with my north south line. So I get, I can get down there and you can either just let your eye take you, which your eye will line up a line or you can slide it up your direction line until it covers it. So now I've slid it up. I've got it on my line. I've got it completely covering one line so I know everything's perfect. That's my tool. I'm, all I'm doing is lining up two lines. I'll pick my compass up and I go to read bearing here and it tells me it's 39 degrees. So down here in A, I'm going to write just to do the math, it's 39 degrees. That's 39 degrees is true north. I have to add, I know on this map, I've looked at it, it's 18 degrees declination. So I'm going to go 39 plus 18, 49, 59 minus 2 is 57 degrees. That's my magnetic north. That's how simple it is. Magnetic north. So that's the direction I have to go. So when I get out in the woods and physically going to go to that point, I set 59 degrees into my compass, box my red in the shed, and go. Deadly accurate. Um, the other thing... Uh, there's always a fail safe in this because I found that people if they're going to go in a southerly direction because when you work with a map don't turn your map around to work with it keep your map if you always keep your map facing away from you north is away from you You then you when you use your compass on it you, you put your north you put your lines to the north, your bezel lines, because that's, that's the other important thing of doing this. Because if you start working around, you can turn this compass so the bezel lines are parallel, but your red arrow is pointing south. You're going to be 180 degrees off. There's several ways. You can't be off one, you could be off a degree. You can't be off three or four degrees doing this method but you can be off 180 degrees. But there's a way to check that, and I call it the fail-safe, is what I call you check your quadrant. So we basically have quadrants on this paper. North 
east. That's one quadrant. So 57 degrees, so it's between 0 and 90. I come up with 57. Is that heading northeast? Yes, I checked it. It's northeast. The next quadrant is a, this is a northeast quadrant. Then you have a southeast quadrant, a southwest quadrant, and a northwest quadrant. And that's all it is. And that's, your, that's how you check to make sure you're, you're not 180 degrees off. Another illustration of it here, you could just put northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest. Always teach people that's your fail safe, that's your last step to do. Okay. Now that we know how to do that, how simple it is, we can just we can transfer onto the map and do it. So this particular first map I'm going to show you we talked about in the map section that some of them have these grid lines and some of them don't like this map underneath. And I, I explained to you how to fix it. So because these grid lines I can, I can look up here to the top of this map and come back down to the bottom and that line is that's a little bit off and I can go into my into my uh, data here in the bottom and it's 0 0.51 degrees it's a half of a degree off from true north so since our Compass is in two degree increments. You can't be really any more accurate than a half a degree anyways. So we can use the grid lines, the north-south grid lines, as our reference point for our bezels, to line up our bezel lines. It's accurate enough to do it that way. So let's pick a couple points here and we'll go. So we could either put, you know, you're not going to put A, B, C, D on your map. You're going to go from a certain point. So if I decided I was going to go, there's a, there's a road through this map here, and I'll come down here, and okay, here's an intersection of two roads. So there's a reference I can find. I can drive down the road, and I can find this intersection. So I'm going to park here, and I'm going to head up onto this, mountain is a mountain with like three knobs on it okay so I'm gonna say I look at the elevations and this one is 2367 2408 and 2256 so the middle one is the highest point that's where I want to decide I want to take a hike to okay you may not carry a ruler in your woods but I have one here and I could just put my ruler, there's an X at that point that's atop, I could draw a line. If you're in the woods, you don't have a, uh, you don't have a uh, ruler or a pencil, doesn't matter. All you do is you take your map, and we're going to use this, the edge of our map as a straight edge. And you can, you can turn this any way you want. So I'm going to get the edge of my map. On line it up on both X's get it just as accurate as I can on both of those X's and then if I want I can just kind of make a crease in it which will hold that from turning and then I'm going to take my compass and I'm going to lay it down on that point so always remember to point your compass in your direction of travel and this is where people get 180 degrees off because I'm going to go now in a basically a southerly direction most people work in this way a lot of times you, they would lay their compass down like this it's wrong it's 180 degrees off because I'm laying my compass opposite my direction of travel like I said I want to park at that intersection and I'm coming to the mountain so my compass has to be in my direction of travel Okay, I lay my compass on my line, 
and I find a grid line, I can slide it down I find a grid line, and I turn my bezel, and I line up, I line up a bezel line on a grid line. And I've also taken note to make sure that the red arrow or the north is north of the map on the map. Compass bezels north to the north of the map. And that's it. I've lined up my lines, go in there, I pick it up. I do the same thing. I read the bearing here. This bearing is telling me it's right at 200 degrees. Okay? I got 200 degrees. That's true north. Now all I have to do is add 18. 218 degrees. I dial 218 into my compass. Step away from my vehicle. And then I... When I all I have to do is I turn my body. This is another thing you have to be mindful of, and we'll do this more in an outside setting. You don't, you don't turn your compass like this. You basically lock your compass into the center of your chest, and your eye will take you where you need to go. And you just turn your body until the red is in the shed. That's what I, that's the red needle is in the red shed. And there we go. I'm lined up and now I'm looking, I can look right down my arrow in the center of my compass. And I look right down into the woods, across the field, whatever you have for terrain or features. And you find something in your line of sight. And then you head that way. You head right down and pick out a tree or a rock or whatever you see. You walk to that, pick your compass up, red in the shed, and you can walk through the woods miles. And if you just keep a reference point, you point to something all the time, you're going to get to where you're going. Now, obviously in the woods, you might have to go around some things. You know, you might be a big boulder or you might be a little water hole or something, and you, you have to account for that. But basically, if you're walking straight, if you need to, if you need to shine by a, a uh, you, you got a, a, a water hole you can't get around, you just pick out something on the other side, even if it's a small pond. You just pick out a certain tree, rock, ledge, whatever you see over there, blow down, and walk around the pond, and you get to that certain spot, and then you start again. And I've taken people before in my, in my compass courses that didn't know anything about a compass. And within a short period of time, they can navigate through the woods like that a mile and come right out to where they're supposed to. Very simple, very easy way to do it. And uh, it's, it's absolutely accurate. So there's, there's some steps. If you wanted to write the steps down to do that, it's, it's kind of simple, and you could carry those steps with you because, you know, if you're out in the woods and you're trying to Google up this course, you're not going to get it. So, so step one would be to, to establish your point of travel, where you want to go, wherever it is. If you want to go to a pond in the woods to go fishing, you want to go to the top of a mountain to hike, there's a special signpost in the woods or a cross and you want to go to hunt, whatever it is, you establish what, what that is. So that's the first step. And then, so the second step would be point your compass in direction of travel. Don't forget that. It's always point it in the direction of the travel. Third step would be and when I say point it in the direction, I mean put it on your line, your established line, with your compass pointed in a direction of travel. Step three would be to line up your bezel lines, and you want to make a note north to north, north of the compass, north of the map. Line your bezel lines up with a north-south line. And then the next step is 
read your baron, and add your declination. And then the failsafe, like I mentioned before, is, is to check your quadrant. I didn't do that last time. We were going in a southwesterly direction. 218 degrees is more than 180, so in less than 270. So I know it's southwesterly, so it works. It's not 180 degrees off. And it's as simple as that, folks. I mean, there's no... You're not trying to use any magnetic part of your compass until you physically go there. But you can establish where you want to go very simply and easily, get an accurate bearing, and head into the woods. So now I'm going to show you on just a little tip on the other map. This is the other map, 1970 vintage I guess, that doesn't have the grid lines printed on the map. I mentioned it before, but all you need to do, you can take a ruler, you could take a piece of paper, anything with a straight edge, and all you do is you start at the margin of the map, and you, you make parallel lines. So you just take a pencil, you can go, you make a pencil line, you move your ruler over, you make another one, and you can make a series of lines. If it's a map you're going to use all the time, might be a good idea to make a fine line all the way across that map. The more lines you have, the easier it is to find one in your compass, right? If you're just trying to do one particular point, I mean, you could, you could, you could use a whole sheet of paper and do it. Anything that's got two parallel lines, and that's all you have to do is you have to establish a line and go from there, but it's the same thing. Just doesn't have those grid lines but most of them I think you'll find have the grid lines if they're regular USGS maps and that's it that's map and compass combined together and uh, we'll show you a little bit about how to physically do it out in the woods So, as I told you, <clears throat> putting the map and compass together, you know, to get from one point to another. So now I'm going to kind of show you in the outside what we're talking about. So we've driven in on some gravel roads back here. And you have to have a starting point wherever you want to go and a place to go. So we're in a gravel pit here. So I got this gravel pit on the map. just off of this road. So a gravel pit's marked with like a, a pair of shovels like in a cross here, but it says gravel pit. So I know we're here and there's a pond, for example, we're gonna go to, there's a little pond over in here. Might wanna try, see if there's a fish in it. Might wanna go check it out for sightseeing, the loons. Maybe it's a place to look for a buck around it or something. But anyways, we're going to go to that pond and uh, so like I said we're going to we're going to establish a line and I'm actually just so we can see it I'm going to put a line on the map and and you want to go like to the center if you're going to a pond or a, a bigger feature aim for the center of it that way if you're just off a little bit you can you can uh you'll still hit it. So I'm going to make a little line from the gravel pit. Over to the pond. Now, on this map, I've, I've established some north-south lines. But as I can see here, my line that I've established is not quite long enough. So all I got to do is, is lay my paper on it. And just extend it a little bit, my north-south line. I'll extend it down so it intersects my line of travel. So I'm gonna take my compass, like we said, I'm gonna lay my compass on my line, 
with my arrow in the direction of travel, compass is up, I'm traveling from the gravel pit to the pond, compasses are in, in the line of travel. I've got a north-south line. I'm gonna spin my bezel around to make and making sure my north on the compass bezel is to the north of the map or up. And I'm gonna line up. I'm gonna line up the bezel lines right on my north-south line. And that's it. I can pick up my compass now. See, this is sometimes difficult in the woods if the wind's blowing and you're trying to have it on the ground, I'm trying to establish with a magnetic. So I have uh, 298 degrees. Okay, that's my true north. I have to add, I know it's 18 degrees in this area. So I got 298, I'm gonna add 18. So 298, 308, and eight, 316. So I'm gonna set 316 in my compass. So I go to 310 and three more ticks. Two ticks less than 320. I set that in. Now I can put my map up. Put my pen away. Okay. Now. <clears throat> so. I've dialed in. You can see here. 316 degrees on my arrow, on my center line. I've set 316 in, and that's where I gotta go. I could also look, find my distance, and figure out my distance too, but, so we're gonna go 316 degrees. I, once again, I'm gonna hold the compass in the center of my chest, like, a, like I'm a tripod. I'm not gonna hold it here, I'm not gonna do any of this. Hold it dead center, and that's the only way you can sight it. And then, if you can see the bezel, you see the needle is red, and there's my red in the shed, and I'm gonna rotate my body until it's red is dead center in the shed right there, okay? So when, the, when, I'm, when I got the red in the shed, all I have to do is look at my arrow now, my 316 degrees. I look right off my arrow, front of my chest, and I sight right down. So I could start out, if I'm looking down, right down there, I look right down across the pit, and there's, there's a, a V in the pit down there. You can see the V in the pit, and there's some birch trees sticking out. There's a double birch tree behind some firs. That's what I took a sighting on. So I took a sighting down there. All I have to do, I don't, I can, there's like a hole in the pit where they dug gravel, doesn't matter. I got a sight on that. I'm gonna walk down to that point, pick up my compass again, look at the next thing I can see down through the woods. Once I get my red in the shed again, I'll look down through the woods and just continue on and on and on, through, down through the woods. Again, I can look at the map, find out my distance, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you a little bit for just a second on how to count your distance in the woods. So we can measure our distance, and uh, once we figure out our distance, we can break it down into chains. This is a simple lesson, and, and I might do something different on it, but it's, a, it's the old way they surveyed maps and everything years ago, and it's called the Gunther's Chain. And it's, uh, a chain is 66 feet. And there's 80 chains in a mile. So the only thing you have to do to figure out your distance walking is how many paces you have to a chain. So you can do it any way, you can go out on your lawn or whatever and take a tape measure and, and measure 66 feet. And then you pace it down. And it's easy if you just count every other step. So every time your left foot, every time your right foot hits, 
you count down. And most people, uh, 10 to 13 paces per chain. I'm about 11 because I'm longer legged. So all okay, so just, I was telling you about Gunther's chains and pacing. So what I've done is taken a tape measure, rolled it out to 66 feet. I'm gonna walk down. You always do it a couple times. You can do it more than a couple, but at least twice. Take your average. So here we go. Twelve. Twelve. I thought I was eleven. I must be getting slow, but whatever yours is, it is. So I'm twelve paces every other time my foot hits a step. You might be twelve, you might be ten, you might be eleven. Probably not gonna be thirteen. Walk your normal pace, don't stretch it out, don't short step it, just however you walk is how you walk, and uh, that's how you'll be the most accurate pacing your way through the woods. So you've got 11 steps, or it's every other step. If you've got 11 paces to a chain, you've got 11 paces. If that pond I'm, I'm gonna go to is a mile and it's 80 chains, I gotta count that off 80 times. I gotta count off 11 paces 80 times, and then I went a mile. If I gotta go 40 chains for a half a mile, but you can do the math and figure out your distance because if you're trying to hit a small spot, you could walk by it if you got into some thick stuff or you just kind of got a little bit off course. If you got some reference to distance, at least you'll know you're, you should be there. Because you can, if you have no reference point, especially if you're going up and down through the hills, you don't know if, if it was a small point, a small pond or something you were trying to find and you happen to miss it. Did you, you don't know if you missed it or you come up short. So keep track of distances pretty easy that way so anyways off we go down through the woods 316 degrees simple as that is that just you keep on your compass reading keep your red in the shed you get to where you're going well I hope this uh, instruction was helpful to you this course and uh, I think you should really practice it and get to know it and it make you more comfortable in the woods so the instruction manual that I showed you that I made up is going to be available on our website just go to bigwoodsbucks.com and you can view that, maybe download it or whatever and, and uh, carry it with you if you want. So, good luck in the woods. Enjoy yourself while you're out there.